exploit in finance. Money is a weapon. The Bible declares that money is a defense. That means that apart from God defending a man, when you take a poor man to court, even with an evidence, the rich man with, without evidence can produce evidence with money. So money is a defense. So I pray that God will send you some. Why? Amen. The chair is broken. Oh. Protocols. Now come, then come this way. Tell somebody, you see, when we start preaching about money, people start acting holy. But you see, I told you last two weeks that Jesus became poor, that you, beca- you, you become rich. One of the major assignments of Jesus was to become poor, that you through his poverty, you become rich. Hallelujah. Now, Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13, quickly. I'm going to run. As you are seated, expect a package from an angel. Do you believe it? Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. In other words, poverty. So you can be a child of God, yet be poor. And I told you last week that being a child of God is enough. It's not enough. You must know the keys to dominate in this kingdom. And that's why he told Peter to you, it has been given for you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Mystery gives you mastery. Hallelujah. Amen. Your amen is too weak today. Amen. Now, let me repeat some few things I said, then I'll rush through. I told you last two weeks when I began these teachings that many, mo- many or most of the dreams and visions God wants to fulfill through us as his people strives on the wheel of money for them to be fulfilled. So God can give you the ability to study but without money you can't fulfill that vision. Remember when Jesus hanged on the cross he didn't take anointing to bring him down. He took a rich man. And that is why God says, I wish above all things that you may prosper. It is God's wish. So as we are all here, God is wishing that everybody becomes prosperous. Amen. Your amen is to me. If you don't want poverty, let your amen become now. Amen. You know, poverty is a disease. Poverty is a disease. Many ladies have traded their integrity in an exchange for things because they didn't have money to get the things. Maybe probably as I'm preaching here, there is a young lady dating somebody's father because of what you can get. Oh yeah. So that is why these teachings are very important. We teach you God's way for you to become prosperous. If a sugar daddy can give you money because of the things you can do, there is something you can also do to your heavenly father for him to give you money. Say, sugar daddy to me, my and I'm acrobat is about on them. Oh, yeah. Do you think sugar daddies will just take their money and give it to you? For, for what? Who are you and what are you? There are things you do that compels sugar daddies to give you money. The same way there are things you do that compels your heavenly daddy to give you money. Are you getting me? Now, you decide which daddy you want. Either sugar daddy with pot belly who use you and dump you or God who will bless you on earth and in heaven. When a sugar daddy uses you, your end will be hell. When God blesses you, your end will be heaven. Hello? God can prosper and God prospers. God can give money. God can give money. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18, quickly. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. God wants you to prosper. Look at your neighbor and say, my dear. Come on, shout aloud. You see, the reason why the person can't hear is because poverty has blocked their ear. Take your mouth to the ear and shout, my dear. I break poverty today. Sometimes you, you interview some ladies. Why are you following this man? Apostle, if I don't follow, what would I eat? They don't know how. And do you know the funny thing? There is enough in heaven for you to eat. There is enough. But if you don't have the key, you'll be hungry. How many of you close from school? 
there was food in the house, but you didn't have the key. You didn't know where your mother has placed the key. So you were standing at the gate, crazy, like, how many of you have been there before? Hi. There is food, though. So you had to wait for her to come. Many of us are on the waiting list because we don't have the key to access the door. We are on the waiting list. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee power. So God is a giver of power. Now power to do what? To get wealth. You are not clapping because poverty is saying don't clap. Can I read it again? Remember that it is he God, not your uncle. If you are here, hey, my uncle is in the US, my auntie is in the UK. What's in Michigan? Day your barber family? Or no, you be born abba. Remember today, it is not access bank that gives money. They borrow money, and anyone who borrows money is a slave. The borrower is a slave to the lender. But remember that the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power for wealth. But the question is, if God gives power for wealth, why are we not getting the wealth? Power is not given for free. As we are all here, are we not all Ghanaians? Of course, it's not for all of us. But if we want power, do we say, I promise on my honor? To be faithful and loyal. Hey, after saying it, you get your prepaid card, you go to where the power is and you pay. Now, in this kingdom, we don't pay for power. What we pay for is knowledge. When you get knowledge, you are above. Sometimes, somebody will put something here. You see, for instance, this iPad. I may have bought it from Rudolph, this brother here. But because I have not told him, he doesn't have knowledge that what I bought was for him. So it can be there for 10 years because he has no knowledge that what, I, what is here is for him. Many of us seated here, by now you should have had two lands. But you don't know. Obisi may change future. Future. Now tell whoever. Tell somebody I will not be poor. So for about two weeks now, We've been decoding the mystery of what? Kingdom prosperity. Now, even when you go to a Malam for money, they don't just give you Ghana must go. Okay, throw say, Baba Maba say me peska. No matter Ghana must go, scan up the amount. There are things you do that commands the money you want. So in the spirit realm, there are money, enough money in the spirit realm. But if you get to know what to do for the money to come, it will come. Hello? One day Jesus needed to pay tax. Yes, as we do a tax. When we started to preach a normal to offering, it's not necessarily or pay coin be no to a tax. Yes, I didn't come and then they go ask. So they came to Jesus and said, they came to the disciples and said, Don't your master pay tax? And Jesus said, Hey, enough of the disgrace. Peter, come. Go to the sea. Ah, you see, Jesus was decoding the mystery. Peter is a fisherman. He has been fishing for his life. He has never caught a fish with money. He came in contact with Jesus, being the word, and told him, go back. <laughs> he went to the same place he has been fishing for years. Caught the first fish in his mouth that was gold. What, what am I teaching you? What I am teaching you is that it is good to work hard, but working hard without revelation, it will, it will be hard for you in life. Jesus did this. He said, go back to the sea where you've been fishing. Go there. There is a mystery I want to decode for you. Notwithstanding, we should offend them. You see, poverty makes you offend people. One says, so for one city, and for 10 million. One the first cannot. Me both you here. Or be a Kobe because of pants. But if a pants say, oh my, it's one of the pants. And they be a jail here. So one for pants and a pants is here today. But oh, here I will amplify things that are not important. Poverty makes you amplify things that are not important. 
Oh, yeah, my ultimate two in my swat bank. And no more betting them. My God. Pover- eh? Let me be honest. Poverty is bad. Apart from hating, apart from not going to hell, decide not, not to be poor. Make a decision that me, I will not be poor. Because you see, so this teaching. Do you know that yesterday when I was studying in today's service, I realized that I can take three months to teach this. Hey, there are a lot of things we must learn. Man of God! <laughs> How many of you don't want your children to grow up in the environment you grew up in? So get ready for a kingdom key. Why? The Bible says it is God that gives power. It is God that gives. So the question is, what do I do for God to give? However, we, we don't want to offend them. So go down. Many money, poverty makes you offend people by heart. But also, we'll be the mates. 50 pesos. Now, who will be there? No, but I'm not going to be there. 50 pesos. 50 pesos. 50 pesos. 50 pesos. 50 pesos. 50 pesos. Obey. 50. Haba. Imagine if God blesses you and you get your own car. You don't be saying amen. Maybe, who will be saying amen? Who I see kingdom prosperity being transferred. Receive it today. Sit down. We don't want to offend them. So go down to the lake. Throw in a line. So you realize that as much as Jesus knew where money was, there was something Peter had to do for the money to come. So you realize that there was money. Enough money for Jesus to use to pay off his debt. But he told Peter... For us not to offend them. For you not to offend the people you stay with. There is something you do in this kingdom. That makes the kingdom produce a miracle. So he said to Peter. Send a bear. Go down to the lake. And throw. So anyone who wants to enjoy kingdom prosperity. Has a role they play. In order to what? Enjoy kingdom prosperity. So go down to the lake and throw in a line. Open after catching the fish, open the mouth of the fish. The first fish you catch, and you will find a coin. Take it. So you realize that the money was already there, but there was something Peter had to do for the money to come. And last week, so I'm just giving you a recap. I spoke to you about many dreams and visions have died because of the lack of money. Many people have died today because they couldn't pay for oxygen. Now, let me ask you, as you are seated here, if there is a problem, do you have a one family member who can say, Majina Mama? Like an uncle who say, Sir, one million Ghana CD, I say, and we you, the amount of life imprisonment, Metuaka. Do you have somebody like that? The only person you have is God. So today, open your ears and listen. If your mother falls sick now, do you have anybody to say, I, I can pay for your mother to go to India? So please, the message I'm preaching this first week, second week, third week, the third week, right? Please take it serious. What do you think? Wow. Yes. And last week, I showed you how poverty came, right? God bless man. Many of us don't know how poverty came. In the beginning, God made man to be prosperous. The Bible says, the Lord, before man came, God had created everything. The mind of God, or in the plan of God, man is not meant to suffer. Man is meant to enjoy. Especially women. Oh, yeah. Now, you see, if we're a guy, let me preach to you first. Your number one responsibility is to ensure that women are always smiling. That is why one of the last things God created was a woman. The very last thing before he rested was a woman. So God was restless without a woman. Yeah. Yeah. But before the woman came, everything was ready. My brother, you are telling her you love her, but you don't have a bed in your room. You better break up and go and find some work to do. Love doesn't buy wig. I love you, I love you, I love you. It doesn't buy eyelashes. 
He doesn't buy lipstick. That is why sometimes it's so sad that you, you love the guy from JHS primary into uh, SSJ University. No, we have a genome. One young Kokwam will be able to Kunafa. There is a guy crying here like that. I can see you. When in a primary, now our day, now they won't call. Sana, JHS. And we're going to go to the school and we're going to go to the school. And we're going to go to the school. We're going to go to the school and I'm the boss. I want to know. What are social applications? But not all the guys here. Every guy here is exempted from a curse. Now look at this. And to Adam he said, because you listen now. So now, when God created man, God initially created man to enjoy. So God created the sea, everything that will make man a blessed man. But when man sinned, now this is how poverty came. And, at, and he said to Adam, because you listened to your wife and ate the fruit, I told you not to eat. I have placed a curse on the ground. So it was the sin of man that invited a curse. And so Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, God wanted man to enjoy. Then Genesis chapter 8, Noah came to break the curse of God. How did Noah break the curse? And the Bible said when Noah came from the ark, Noah brought all kinds of animals, clean animals, and offered it on an altar. There you go. And the Bible says when he offered it an altar, on an altar, the, the offering he gave, like the, the, the environment to offer one. Now you are seeing an emblem, but God is seeing an incense. Now, everybody want to go. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you, I'm decoding. My God. You see, poverty will not let you see things. You see, anytime you see people say, I'm going to be a little bit of Me mentam pesi uti. Obwa. Obwa, 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 obwa. Fami toni niwa. How many of you didn't like certain things until money came? You started liking it. Me, me, I don't like fried rice and ketchup. So, uh, instead of going to, going all the way to buy fried rice, why not buy some indomie? Obwa. Money to buy no day. <laughs> Let me preach. And Noah built an altar. So from Genesis chapter 3, when God cursed man, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, man was suffering under a curse, poverty. And Noah with a kingdom mystery appeared and built an altar to the Lord and sacrificed. He's about to tap into the kingdom prosperity. And sacrificed on, the, and sacrificed on it the animals and the best that had been approved for that purpose. So that means that not all things are approved for what? To break poverty. There are some of us, when we are giving, we give one gun. I see God is begging us. So you realize that the offering he gave God, it was what God had approved, not what he had approved. Many of us, we dropped offerings. It didn't go to heaven. It went to the church. Why? You gave what you approved, not what God approved. Your ways are not God's ways. So there is a way God wants you to give an offering. Verse 21, quickly. And the Lord was pleased. The question is, anytime you give an offering, is God pleased with it? Until God is pleased, you can never receive from him. And the Lord was pleased with the sacrifice and God is about to change the curse. No me nanya me to be asked. Or because obi aba for the air. No curse can withstand a sacrifice. No curse is too powerful. Why? Because even a curse came because somebody sacrificed. And the Lord was pleased with the sacrifice and said to himself, I will never again. Come on, shout again. again. There is something you do. Your children will not suffer your pain again. Amen. There is a decision when you make today. You are ending the cycle of poverty and you are beginning the what? The cycle of prosperity. 
Maybe that's a man, kind man. 20 years later, we will see the difference. Yes, 20 years later, we will see those who are. Eh, now, my mom was there. Every man you see under this earth who is in possession of something, there is a power back in him. Obi Biara Huna, it has it. Listen, let me tell the truth. It is either God that is blessing the person or it is Satan. Now, as I'm walking here, how do you know I'm a man of God? Not just because I'm in suit. There are evidences backing that I'm a man of God. The people who are not men of God but commanding certain results. There are other spirits giving them the results they have. By China for Mongo, sorry. But they said Buddha. Who oh, is Buddha? What 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 is Buddha? They only know Baobalu. No, no, no. From Anna Tamale. Go to India, see every corner you see there is an idol. Every house that has an idol. And you see, when you give sacrificing to their God and you pay homage to them, they give you power. So every man you see, because you see, do you go where they go? So you go where they go. So you go where they go. If God puts a miracle on you, they'll be wondering where you went. You came to God. Yeah. Have I settled that argument? Yes. And the Lord was pleased with the sacrifice and he said to himself, I will never again curse the earth and destroy all living things. And give him King James, King James, King and the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore every living thing as I have done. Now look at the verse 22. Everybody look, 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 look at 22. Now this is God's promise to break curse. Now God is saying that as far as the earth remaineth, this is the key. When Noah introduced the key, God is saying that as far as the earth remained, this is the key that will break every curse. Now, this is God saying, not a man. While the earth remained, seed. Anytime there is a seed time, expect a harvest time. Who is talking here? So, God has given us the church the key. While the earth remained, seed time and harvest. Cold and heat. How many were feeling the heat? Because God has prophesied. Don't blame whether it is God who prophesied in Genesis chapter 8. While the as far as say it as it so there, those who sow will reap. Seed time. So that means there is a time to sow. What is the time? And now, as young as you are, instead of you buying 15 weeks, how many seeds have you sown? While the earth remained, sea time and harvest, cold and winter, night and day. How many realize that no matter what day will come? And no matter what night will come. So that simply means that no matter what you're going through, as far as you are sowing seeds today, expect the time for harvest. Whoever has given an offering on this altar, I will leave your bumper harvest. I will release your bumper harvest. Sit down. So now, God is saying that seed time and what? So what are some of the seeds? And last week I spoke about tight. You remember? What is tight? Tight simply means 10% of your income. It belongs to God. It does not belong to you and your boyfriend, baby. It belongs to God. Let me rush. Now, tight means, tight means out of the 10 that means that any time you receive any money, whether you are a student, whether you are a worker, wherever the money comes from, if it is 1,000 Ghana, 10% belongs to God. Why? It is believed that whatever a man received, it was God who gave it to man. So if God gave it to you, then he has a portion in it. Even you, as you are dating, when the guy says, you say, as far as you are his girlfriend, he wants to kiss your mouth. Am I lying? But you are my girlfriend. So he feels like as much as you are his boyfriend, girlfriend, you are mandated or he has a portion in you, yet he didn't create you. And all the tithe of the land, 
Whether the seed of the land or the fruit of the land is the open your mouth and say, you see, because you're about to give, you don't want to say, you don't want to say it. But the truth is, what you have can get you the land you want. Now let me ask you, the way as I say price, air cost you bet me to susu to be in Pune. Eh? You bet me to susu. Now there may not be a national service to susu at all as I say. At all iron rust, at all cement. After me, I'm going to be seen in my mouth. But tell somebody there is a way out. What is the way? Seed time and now God is saying that all the tithe of the land, whether a seed of the land, look at this, it is the Lord. So any money you receive, God has a portion in it. Any money. Whether an uncle, somebody told me last week, by a person, I don't work, but I said, but you have bundle. A person, when I finish school, when I finish my announcements, I mean, when I start working, I will give my time to God. It is not true. He that is faithful in the little. Little means that as a student, the money given to you by your uncle, when you start tithing to God, it means that when God blesses you the more, you will give him more. <laughs> Tell somebody, you can start now. Now, if you don't start now, it means you will not start receiving from now. Now, when you say, I will give later, it means, Lord, bless me later. How many of you believe that some uncles are very stubborn? To get their money to chop is very hard. But how many of you miraculously they send you some money? You when you see the money, you say, Hey, it was God. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. It is the Lord that stirs the heart of a king. Wheresoever you want. So anytime you receive from any man an uncle, you maybe your ex, your ex sends you something. I'm not saying go and have sex. Maybe I will end by teaching consecration in giving. God does not accept every money. No, 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 no. Even that one, God will even curse you. You are polluting God's altar. Now, the king's heart is in the hands of God. It's in the hand of the, of the Lord. As the river of water, he turning it whatsoever. So for your uncle to even think about you, amidst all his busy schedule, it was God who turned the heart. So when he sends you 500 Ghana, 50, uh, 10%, that's 50 Ghana city. It belongs to God. But you see, do you know that tithe began in Genesis? I taught you last week. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. When God blessed man, now let, let me ask a question. Did man create the sea? Did man create the trees? Whatever you are enjoying, God gave it to you. you did, and I worked hard for my money. Hard. If your heart stopped pumping, would you work hard? For your heart to be... It is God pumping your heart so that your hands can move. Because if your heart is not pumping, how can your hands move to receive money? So it is the Lord. So if you know that it is God pumping your heart, whenever you receive any money, you bring his part. So that he will keep pumping your heart. Boom, 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 boom. If you are not clapping, may God stop. Now look at this. And the Lord took the man. The man didn't take himself. And the Lord took the man and put him in the garden. The man didn't put himself. So what you call hard work, it's God rather working hard through you. Wow. And the Lord took the man and put him in the garden. That family, God put you there. That room, God put you there. This school, God put you here. And to dress it and to man didn't search for the garden. God gave him the garden. The work you get in the future, the breakthrough you get in the future, it is God putting you there, not your hard work. You better clap. Now verse 16, quickly. Now look at verse 16. And the Lord commanded man saying, now look at this, after God blessing man, he is now giving man a command. But So that means that there's an assertion that in seven years, maybe be ano. We may not quite so be ninety nine, but one percent in any day. And also, I ask him. Now look at this. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, "Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. Come on, thou mayest freely." But, so, 
with all the breakthrough God gives you, there is a bat in it. What is the bat? The tight. Hey, Nipa, I'm going to say, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, any bread. Yeah, me mouth thousand. I say for hundred seed bread. I say there be. Me penny na. Now when, but the truth of knowledge, thou shalt not eat it. For in the day thou shalt eat it, thou shalt surely. Any time you eat your tight, you are you are provoking the curse of God. I don't even scare with the curse of God. Any time you eat the the portion that belongs to God, you are cutting yourself from the source of God. He has given you. Access to every blessing. He is saying that the one percent, that one city out of the ten city, give you to me. He said, "No, I will chop it." How many of you here? Malachi chapter three verse ten. So, man of God, does God just take our tithe? No, He takes the, the seed and He gives you a fruit. Your tithe is a seed from the harvest you got from God. Now, every farmer understands that any time you harvest, you don't eat all the harvest. You get a seed out of the harvest to plant more for hard, more harvest. How many of you know that? Any time God blesses you with money, there is a part you give God as a seed to have more money. Now, look at this. Get my video ready. That white people, when do they... As I'm preaching, many of you don't believe it. Africans, they are brainwashing. Brainwashing? Let me move. Do I have powder to wash your brains? Bring ye all the tithe in the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Who is talking here? God. Now, when you bring your tithe as a business person, maybe you get money every week. Me, I always, I always advise people to tithe every week. Because all trying to one man to be no discount. So every week, if God gives you 200 cities, your tithe is 20 cities. Any Momo account, any money that comes into Momo, you send your tithe out of it. Don't wait till you spend it so that God cares can come on you. Now, when you pay your tithe, now look, look at what God is saying. Bring you all the tithe in the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Meat simply means that there may be enough instruments in my house, that there may be good things in my house, that as you are giving for the tithe. Now, the screen, we didn't speak in tongues to get it. It was the tithe you gave that God destined. Now, how many of you have seen the importance of tithe? So now, what God is saying is that, Matthew says 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and, it, and all other things. So when you seek in giving your tithe for the kingdom of God to progress, this is what God is saying. And say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven. So aside prayer, tithing opens your heavens. If we're a business, tap your neighbor. If we're a business person, if we're a student, you can tithe. Am I preaching? Shake your neighbor five times. One. Power is entering your neighbor. Two. I said, shake your neighbor. Shake your neighbor. Ah, nobody's shaking the lady in yellow. Give me Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Let me end. How many want God to open the windows of heaven over your life? Now, somebody may be saying, what happens when God opens the windows of heaven? Luke 3, 21. As Jesus was being baptized, was praying, was praying, the Holy Ghost, which is a typology of power. Don't forget, it is the Lord that gives the word power. So anytime God opens the windows of heaven over your life, what he sends is the power for wealth. So suddenly, you started a small business. It is an online business. And one, one maybe within, three, now look at the lady's testimony. She said she had a budget to get 10,000 Ghana cities. And within January, she got a 10,000 Ghana. Here on this altar. As every business person is connected to this kingdom prosperity, may harvest begin to flow. Yeah. Sit down. Now look at this. When you pay your tithe, I will rebuke the devourer. So anytime you tithe, God is in charge of, of your finance. Catch me. Mm. He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So as you are doing business, somebody will take your business to an altar. You are asleep and God is working. Why? You gave him the permission through your tithe. Anytime you tithe, you are giving God permission into your finances. That's why anybody who has visited any occult, businessman, business guru, every month they visit their altars to, to empower themselves. You've watched Nigerian movies before. You've watched a Ghanaian movie. 
and then our local tree movie. Now, now, Oma Miska, man, to be a media punch, bro. So the appointees, they are tight to service their altar. Your tight is the service that services every aspect of your life. So tight is number one key. That brings you into kingdom prosperity. Say tight. Now, some of you say, me, I will use my tight instead of me to bring my money to church. I want to give it to poor people. You, you are poor. You, are, you poor person, you want to... Can, can I ask a question? Can a poor man change your level? Who you give your seed to will determine the harvest that comes to you. You see, some of us, we act like we are holier than God. One day Jesus was there and somebody came to Jesus and Mary Magdalene came with a precious ointment. Maybe probably her tight. And she poured it on Jesus. And Judas said, Ah, yes, what me has said ye. I said, can you come in here for? So it did not start today. Eh? That's the spirit of Judas. Now, when they were saying that, did Jesus say, ah, it is true? What did he say? The poor you always have. No man can eradicate poverty. And poverty is a decision. If you decide to give to the poor, expect the blessings of the poor. But if you give to God, expect the blessings of God. <laughs> hey, so are you saying we should never give to the poor? I will come to that. There are types of giving. That's why I'm teaching you the power of Titan, then we come to first fruit. The last people you give to is now, for instance, let me stand up. When God called Abraham, what did God tell Abraham? Leave your father's house and I will bless you, and you will be a, your obedience to God puts you in charge of, over the what? The poor. If you have not obeyed God in your Titan, can God bless you to bless the poor? So it is when you have tightened out of your little, then God blesses you, then your cup overflows to the poor. You know, poor people brag too much. Me, 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 Clap your hands for Jesus. This ministry will be tight. Now there are two types of titan. Number one, individual titan. And corporate titan. The individual titan is when you as a person, when God blesses you, you give. Now as a corporate, now we the corporate as a church here, we give our tithe. We give our, every month, we give our tithe. Our tithe goes to another bigger source. Every river and every stream leads to the ocean. Do you know that? Do you know that? Every river and every stream leads to the water. But you see, let me ask a question. Every river has a connection to the rain. If it doesn't rain for some time, the rivers may dry up. The rain is God. You are the river. If God does not rain in you, you will dry up. So do whatever you can for God to rain in you. So one of the things God can rain on you is through tight. So individual titan is when maybe as a person, when God blesses you, as a student, as a new sky, you take 10%, maybe 100 in the day, bro. What are taking 10 cities? What's the next time? 1,000, baby. I'm telling you. And those who tight will always have enough to give. How many of you have been blessed? Now we have individual titan and corporate titan. The individual titan. It's when an individual gives his tight. The corporate is when you ask. Now, so for instance, Mr. Lucia, stand up, please. Now, this servant of God here, he is an individual, but he has his own company. So he shouldn't say, as far as he's tight, his company is tight. No. Touch your neighbor and say, hey. Now, God blesses the corporate and he benefits. So now, what he calls a blessing from the corporate, his business is what? Profit. That prophet comes to him, but the blessing that comes upon the business, God has a share in it. Do you get it? So as an individual, oh, sorry. God blesses him as an individual. He tithes out of the blessings of God. Then when God blesses his company, he gives out of the company too. Hello? Let me jump some few things. 
Another form of giving. Okay, let me touch this. Somebody may say, why do we tithe? Do we tithe because we are scared of God? No. We tithe to acknowledge God as our source. We don't tithe out of fear because God has not lied people who fear him too much. No. God loves cheerful givers. Anytime you are giving to God, you must be smiling. Why? Because you, are, you know that the one you are giving to. Now, do you, know that, do you know why people give to kings? Do you know why? They are looking for favor. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 6. Everybody is a friend of a, what? a giver. Anyone who gives gifts, you have many friends. You try it and see. All your friends start giving them food and see. They will all be coming to your room all the time. How many ladies can testify? There are some guys who, oh, maybe I said, oh, boy. I don't know about one when I do no money there. And I know what I'm saying. Yeah. Crap, how do you think? I'm asking, what do you think? Now look at this. Many will entreat the favor of the prince and every man is a friend of him that gives a gift. When you like giving, you have so many connections. Many of you are, you are chinchillization. On side you say, as you could have to some hammer. Be a winsome as me, but open your mission now. Now, for instance, Tamakunyana swa. Put it Tamakunyana. This is how many of us are in the spirit. I have this for him, but he has to drop this. For this. Many of us, the hundred CD can, can give you life. But drop it for God to give you the thousand CDs to pay your school visit. Me. 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 But I don't say I'm not desperate anymore. I don't move away from my much. I'm much harder. Sir, for now, I'm on control. Obi, you probably go to the casa. May see a sign right now. Sir, cash me money. Do you know the kind of churches they build for Methodist, Presby? They can, they can decide to say they are. I'm on quite a sign back. Today, I was listening to the doctor. He said January. On the wife, I'm on January. Sign back, back. Doctor, could you remember? I see. On the way, see a sign back. And the wife says, sorry, I'm back. May God bless you to that level. Yeah. Where you take one church project and say, I am building a whole church for a community. Yeah. Such a person, when you die, your children will still be blessed. When Solomon built for, when David built for the Lord, the blessings transcended to his generation. Sit down. So number one, we give our tithe to acknowledge God as our source. First Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7. Why do we give tithe? We give tithe to acknowledge God as our source. It is the Lord that gives the power. So anytime you are giving, you acknowledge that God is mine. God is mine. So number two, we tithe because we are obeying the command. If you are willing and obedient. So number one, you are tithing because Uji say Nyamina this is size can hear the MR into Uchi our tithe. Number two, Uchi our tithe. Oh yes, Sutia my Nyamiasa my Nyamesi Yama tithe. So you are giving your tithe because God is commanding us to give. Number one, you are acknowledging God as a source. Number two, you are acknowledging. God's word. Number three, we tie to, we tie because we love God enough. Sound, sound. We tie because we love God enough to honor him with our substance. Now, how many ladies can testify that? All the guys who claim they love you, on Valor's Day, they didn't show anything. No show. Did you show her you love her? Me also be asking a forwarded love emoji. Me, Pastor. Of all day, love emoji. What a command is actually letter. So, Pastor Charles, oh, one of my daughters in the US, Sewa, she sent me a wonderful, sweet message on Vows Day. So, I placed it on our church page. In the Vows Day, her boyfriend and girlfriend are suffering some kind. Not less than five people send me a love message on Vows Day. Yes. Make can work. Esimi, esimi, esimi. Me sorry, no panam me hear me message. Say me nye biya, me nye we. But Obi Uko sendi or sendi love. Me kwa ya forwarded several times. Do you want to know the message she sent me? Happy Vows Day, my father. You have shown me that genuine love that has no boundaries, and I really appreciate you for that. Thank you so much for loving me, regardless of my imperfections. I choose you over and over again. Thank you for being a great shepherd to me. I love you. No, now me take me kicking out what to me. 
She didn't say, I love you. She proved the love by sending a test. So we love God by giving our tithes. It's not because of the curse. You see, how many of you realize that when you love somebody, you are happy to give to them? When you love God, you prove it by giving. How? John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, in that he gave. So love makes you give. Every love of God must tight on their business, on their life as a student. Who can tight? Everybody. Even children can tight. Because you're born to You're born to pampers. You're born to pampers. You're and you know Everybody can. The student can tight. Hey, but I'm not working. But you get money. You get money from your uncles. They send you money. For them to keep sending you money, you need to keep tightening because you acknowledge that it was not them. It was God who blessed them to give you. What do you think? The businessman can give tight. The student can give tight. But man of God, I don't work. But you, have, you can go on WhatsApp. Where do you get money to go on WhatsApp? That 50 pesos, one peso is for God. You see, God is not interested in the amount. He's interested in your faithfulness. No amount of money can move God. It is your faithfulness that moves him. Shout, hey! I don't like your shouting. The last point I'm, I'm talking on today, then we close this. Aside tithe, your next seed you give is first fruit. Somebody say first fruit. Shout it, first fruit. Somebody may say, man of God, what is first fruit? The first fruit is the first agricultural produce. Of a, of a season in the Bible. Now, in the Bible, the, the olden days, when they say first fruit, it simply means that everyone says, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, farmer. Like in the neighbor, they gave their first fruit to God. For instance, oh, yeah, business, oh, yeah, students, well, maybe stand up. Let me use as an example. Come. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Now, this, my brother, when did you start working? I started. Microphone. I am explaining, now I've explained, how many of you understand the tithe now? Now, I'm going to another form of giving. First fruit. What is first fruit? Uh -huh. When did you start working? Last week, Monday, please. Last week, Monday. Yes, please. Now, his first pay is not for him, it's for God. Hey, you will not never be there. You will not be there. You will not be there. Huh? You will not be there. You will not be there. First fruit. Now look at this. Honor the Lord. You see, these are the kingdom keys many Christians don't know. Speaking in tongues, yet no fameko. Today, do you know, when we sat in the car, I told my mom, every, I didn't tell her, I vowed in my head that anytime she sits in the car, I will never let the sun hit her. I told her, I told myself, I want to break a certain level of poverty. So I told that. I'm going to show you kingdom prosperity through honoring your parents too. When you honor them, they receive it. God blesses you. It will shock you. When you knew that for your mother to say, Eradisha me bay, on katon so, sa sema, Eradisha me bay, sa sema, Eradisha mama. Now, there are two blessings in honoring your parents. Number one, when you honor them, you live long. No demon can cut your life short when you carry a parental blessing. If you are here and your mother has never said, you see, mothers don't just bless by heart. They only bless when you, when you touch their heart. How do you touch their heart? Number one, when you obey them. Number two, when you gift them. Anytime I give to my mother, hey, mama, yeah, let her buy. My hand is up. Anytime you give to your parents, let me chip in this. Many of you here, you have been giving to your girlfriends. They have no blessings. Girlfriends, any blessing. Boyfriend, any blessing. Vows than what to boss Kevin Klein. Obi started prepare November last year for Vows Day. To Susie Sakoto. Transparent pant. And red pant, red brazier. What's it? Baby. I told you I was going to shock you. Tana! 
Oko here a box and a baby down a brazier. Such a gift does not command any blessing. It is the blessings of the Lord. What is the blessing of the Lord? The people God has commanded that they should bless. They have power to bless. That's why if your mother cares is over bread, no pastor can change it. So now, this man, now look at this. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy. First fruit is first of every blessing God gives you. When you start a business, maybe we'll start it on Tade. The first profit is not for you, it's for God. If you want my picture, when I went to see my father, give it to me. As a church, our first food is January. Every year, the first food is given every year. Or oh, those who begin, the, they say, Francis, you started stand up. He has, my son, here, he does cleaning, free advertisement. He does cleaning, like, if you want to come and clean, whatever, whatever. Now, as he has started the business, the first profit he got, he should have bought it to the water. But what so ready. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of thy of thy. So that simply means that every January, every Christian is supposed to give their first fruit. That means all the money God gives you, all the breakthroughs, all the, the now this is my brother here. We are all waiting for your first fruit. Yes, please. Leviticus chapter 27 verse 30. You see, these are things we do. That makes God change our level. And the more you obey every sacrifice they give you, the more you change your level. So tithe gives you a certain dominion. But when you give your first food, you command the year. Now, not give me the scripture. Honor the Lord with thy first. Don't buy cheap bone for the baby. It has come. Hey! You are going to be poor. Who gave you the prosperity? Who gave you the, the job? Leviticus, look at, with the first fruit of thy increase. So anytime you start business, maybe 50 city come. That's your first profit. You put it in an envelope, a nice envelope. Then you write it about, Lord, this is my first fruit. Thank you. Hey! That is the beginning of so many things. Leviticus chapter 27 verse 30. You see, that's so many Christians don't know. They are praying tongues. Konko, konko, boroko, toko, toko, toko. Tongues that don't pray poverty. It's a kingdom mystery. What you don't know is what kills you. When a doctor does not know what is harming you, you know, but they can't, they can't give you medicine, isn't it? But when they get to know it, they give you medication. Now today, this is the medication to our poverty as a church. 